Okay, we're back inside theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, and uh, I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, and uh, we have uh, Jeremy Burton, the CMO of EMC, who's putting on this great event, 14,000 plus people. Yep, 14,000 plus. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you. Uh, Dave, we had uh, this week over 120 guests, 32 hours of programming over the week, two terabytes of footage, um, five hosts, 10 C-level executives on theCUBE. We got a lot of disks to store here, and uh, so, uh, well, the queue's yeah. been great, and uh, we started, Jeremy, as you might recall, in 2010 in Boston. Yeah, it's I remember. the first time we had you on, and yeah. uh, you had just joined the company. Right. And you, had, you told us at the time, yeah, we're going to make some changes, you know, I'm big on messaging, and you know, go big or go home kind of thing, and uh, you kind of lived I, up to your words. So, was congratulations on uh, the progress that you made is, in the last uh, couple of go, years. Go big screen or go home. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was, that was the, quite the screen. Are you going to take that back with you? Or? I mean, <laughs> if you don't have a 400 foot screen, I mean, you're not really in the game anymore. <laughs> was that a record? Or? <laughs> well, I've been working, the company that helps us put on the show, I've, I've been working with Envision uh, Communications for probably, I mean, north of 15 years, and uh, they've never done anything close. So, so right. I don't know whether it's some kind of a record, but hey, let, let, let's claim a record until someone comes up with a, hey, a record bigger. breakers, yeah. Lego launch too. Yeah. Um, it's just a lot of flair, and it's really good uh, to, to see because people are excited. But outside of all the the flair and all yeah. the uh, you know the, the circumstance around the event, it's, the messaging is great. Um, and we were very complimentary as we always have been, but this year I love how you're expanding on cloud meets big data, you're keeping it simple, you're expanding the, the IT message under cloud, yep. and big data on uh, business under big data. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone loves it, and so people are really recognizing EMC as a big data company. Uh, and the work that we do out in the field in, in the pharma verticals or healthcare, yeah. um, they're learning what to do with big data. They're like, they don't even know yet what to make of it yet as they try to figure it out. So, they yeah. said EMC is a big data company. Uh, I, well, I th and I think uh, big data, I've, I, I, I always believed and, and still believe, uh, it's really where cloud was three years ago. So there's going to be a lot of confusion. I think you know, folks like you guys can provide commentary to help clarify what it is and, and what it is not. And over the next you know, year, 18 months, I think there'll be more technology brought to market, there'll be more ideas, and then I think the mist will start to clear. And clearly when the mist starts to clear and there's, you know, starts to be big you know, money involved, um, that, that's when we need EMC to uh, you know, really be recognized as the leader. Um, so I think right now we're, everybody's grappling for position and we want to be part of that, but the goal is to be, continue to be a leader when things shake down and then we're in a position to make this a big business. So give me some stats and I want to ask you what the basic stats are here for EMC World. Then I yeah. want to ask you more of a strategic question around uh, packaging of the products and how that's evolving, yeah. and how your, uh, the messaging sits on, as an umbrella over what's going on internally right. and how you're going to shape the next vision. So give us the, the basic stats here at EMC World. Yeah, basic stats, we totally about 15,000 people. Um, I always you know, kind of split this into people we've comped and partners and uh, sponsors and employees versus people who actually paid good money to come. And so people who paid good money to come was right around 9,000. Um, which, you, you know, when you think last year, that's up from 7,200, pretty, you know, um, meaningful jump there. Uh, but overall show about 15,000 people. Um, exhibit hall is packed, about 130 sponsors in there. We have about 3,000 partners, uh, or 3,000 people from partners here this week. So, you know, there's a, a really kind of partner-centric um, uh, community uh, that we've got uh, on the exhibit hall floor. Um, we have over 100 press, we have over 100 analysts. Um, you know, really, anyone who is anyone in the EMC ecosystem, I think, has learned to, to know that this is the, the kind of religious gathering that you, you've got to be here. The financial analysts are here as well. Uh, so, a little bit of everything. But Data but Science Summit, too. Data Science Summit is, is kicking off a little bit later CIO today. CIO event? So, yes, I forgot. <laughs> How day, how could Partner I forget? conference. Partner conference, yeah. <laughs> we did that Sunday. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've really turned EMC World into a, a kind of a geek, from a geek party to really a gathering for the EMC ecosystem with, still with the technologists at the center, which I think is fundamentally important. Yeah, and, so we've had, uh, and we've had 130,000 views of our content just in two days. We're hoping to get over 150,000 for the three days. Great. Today, so. Yeah, well, and, and one of the goals we had was to make this the most social EMC world ever. Mm. And part of that was in the build-up, and we, I think attendance has been good because we got going in the social sphere early. Uh, but if I look at now the Twitter traffic, and I mean, the great thing about Twitter is you get immediate feedback on whether you're hitting the mark or not. And I'm pleased to say at least, I mean, I, I follow religiously, you know, on Hootsuite, 
just as I'm sure you guys do, uh, what's going on, and by and large, an overwhelmingly uh, positive sentiment, and, and that's kind of the, the acid test these days, because when people don't like something, man, it's on, it's on Twitter in a heartbeat. You know, I have to ask you though, so a couple years ago, or you know, the, even, take the cloud big data, that was your first mm. imprint. On yeah. the big messaging, yeah. um, and at the time, it was like, okay, that's good messaging, but now it's translated into actual product, and it's got momentum, so yeah. how do you translate you know, strategy into messaging, or messaging into strategy, and how involved are you in that? Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's funny, uh, the industry analysts uh, that I mentioned earlier, I was with them last night, and they asked a, a, a very, very similar question, and, and I think as you grow uh, as a company, you, you can get trapped into this, you know, only selling the things that are on the bus, so to speak, and positioning the company for kind of what you have today, because that's what customers are buying. And I, I think um, behaving like a leader, you've got to be able to see where the market is going, spend money ahead of time, positioning the company for where the market is going, so that when it gets there, you're established as a name and a leader and a player, and then it's about sales execution to get the revenue associated with that opportunity. So, you know, really, we, we, we uh, have felt for a couple of years that this big data thing was going to be huge. The Greenplum acquisition really gave us the impetus to do it and the credibility to tell the story. I think as much as your know, marketing is one thing but without substance, a product, marketing, uh, I don't know what the line is, but you know, good marketing kills bad products very quickly, you know? And uh, so we had enough substance there, I think, to hang the message off. And then, you know, Pat, as, as from a product standpoint, been a very big believer in big data, as an opportunity, and so over time, I think we've assembled a, you know, pretty high quality product strategy to back up that message, and the, the two go hand in hand. One without the other, is nowhere near as successful. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's where I want to I want to get yeah. you on that strategic question because it's almost like you, yeah. it's like a relay race. You got to wait for your teammates to catch up. You got out with the messaging, yeah. nice umbrella, high, nice arc of a, of a story. Now everyone's kind of lifting up. Yeah. So uh, what's next? So we have a couple of things that we've been covering, obviously from the beginning. The green plum, green plum, kind of you know sideways a little bit here and there, becomes big data. They buy Pivotal. Yeah. Okay, really, really a monumental movement for Green Plum. Takes them out from this appliance, weird positioning to really a, a relevant position yeah. of big data, yeah. compatible to do, developer focused, centric focused in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, that was cool. You got the flash thing going on with Extreme IO, yeah. uh, in memory. All this stuff's happening. How are you going to morph the messaging? What's your view on, okay, you got flash going on, you got the whole DevOps, pivotal yeah. thing going on. Well, I, th I think what we've got to do, and I think what, what people are ready for is, you know, big data is this umbrella term, and I think we've got to try and stratify for people, look, these are the key use cases for big data. I mean, you know, yesterday in Area 51, we showed the big fast data with the SATAS uh, technology, which is you know, now a part of VMware. That, that is one specific uh, category of application. Um, you know, there are going to, you know, there will be many others too, and I think we've identified three or four different use cases, and I think we've now got to go to the customer base and say, um, we've got this technology, we've got this umbrella message, this is how you apply this technology to, to this specific area to deliver value to the people inside your organization. And I feel like the next wave for big data over the next 12 to 18 months, that this is for me part of the misclearing a bit. It's this one, it's this kind of big term that everyone's jumping on, but to continue to be a leader, you need to do a little bit more than have the signpost. Uh, you've got to tell people, look, these are the use cases, this is the technology, this is how you apply the technology to the use cases, sometimes with the services, Pivotal Labs, to deliver something of value for your stakeholders in the business. So one of the things, we were on the big stage up there with Maggie Burke, which was fun to, uh, to kind of sit up there and do the, uh, you know, the warm up band with Joe Tucci on the EMC TV. Yeah, um, so. She asked about some of the things going on in Silicon Valley and I said, um, and I kind of made a prediction, I said, based on where Jeremy's messaging is going, I think the next pivot uh, pillar will be real time. Do you see real time? Because all the stuff that yeah. we're seeing is, it's cloud and big data, and then the value proposition on top of big data and cloud is led this movement to real time business. You guys doing a direct media campaign with yeah. your own TV, we have theCUBE, yeah. analytics, dashboard, is that it's on your radar? Yeah, re real time, it, it's one of those, it's kind of a loaded term, yeah. right, because. You can have fun with that. Yeah, well, from a marketing <laughs> standpoint, it's, <laughs> it's one of these dreamy things, you want everything to be in real time yeah, if you're yeah. in marketing, right? And the, you know, the shopping demo that we did yesterday, I mean, there's no point in having a big data analytics demo if your text arrives, you know, <laughs> five minutes too late by the time you've left the store, that, that would not be good. And So I think real, real time is going to be a factor. I think from a marketing standpoint, it's probably got more mojo than some of the other uh, segments or, or less attractive segments of, of big data. Um, and, and there's going to be a number of technologies involved in that as well. I think SATAS is one. I mean, VMware's got a great uh, set of technologies around Gemfire. 
you know, low latency transactions. And so I, I think what, you know, one of the trends that you will see is, is probably EMC doing more things uh, with VMware um, in the realm of big data. I mean, they're, they're coming at um, the market from a you know, utilization of server hardware into yeah. cloud operating system, but they've really got a platform that you can build applications on top. One class of applications will be big data applications. We've got Greenplum, we've got Hadoop, we've got Pivotal, they've got Satas, they've got um, uh, Gemfire. I think those together we've got to start to look at um, and, and tell a combined story, because we have a lot of mutual customers. Yeah, because yeah. a year ago, you know, you look at VMware, yeah. really didn't have a big data strategy, really weren't talking about it, thinking yeah. about it now. Those pieces that you just mentioned, Maritz talks about going deeper into business transformation, yeah. uh, beyond just the consolidation, and that's what it's going to take, and then the CETUS acquisition, and now you can start to see the pieces come yeah. together. I mean, VMware have got three clear layers to their strategy. They've got the vSphere core, which is all really the cloud operating system. Right. They've got the access through uh, you know, VDI and the Horizon project that he talked about, but that middle tier, the application platform, um, I mean, things like Cloud Foundry, but then you know, Gemfire, Satas, Greenplum, Hadoop, I mean, and, and I think Pivotal been the you know, almost kind of key enabler of building the applications. We, we got to start to look at that as a solution that we can bring to bear on these use cases. So, and you've you know, obviously worked at some software companies, you understand the, the leverage yeah. you get out of developers, yeah. and clearly that's something that VMware's focused right. on. Do you see EMC increasingly focused on that community? Um, I, I think we should probably let um, you know, VMware take the lead on it. I, I, I'm a big believer in I kind of, uh, guess the term, English term, horses for courses, right? Yeah, sure. RSA yeah. does a pretty good job with security guys. They've got a good brand. We've invested in the RSA brand. RSA conference, if you like, is the embodiment of that. Um, VMware have got really the virtualization software on up kind of crowd, um, although develop is somewhat new for them as well. And then EMC, I think we do a very good job kind of to administrators and, and infrastructure. Um, and so I think we've, we've got to pick which kind of arrow in our quiver we want to fire at the given target. And if it's developers, leading with you know maybe a combination even of VMware and Greenplum is probably the right call. And Pivotal is the right course for Pivotal is, is Greenplum? Yeah, Pi and, well, and Pivotal, are kind of, they're a very small company but with a high degree of influence because of the great work that they've done. And I think you know, that's key when you're, you're going after developers. It's about community, it's about influence, it's about great technology, it's about you know, word of voice in the social sphere. And they've got a lot of that um, you know, uh, going on and, and we, we've got to leverage that and not try too much to be overbearing from a you know, big daddy EMC perspective. We've yeah, got to let them get on. Yeah, it's a cultural exactly. Be careful with. Yeah. Good. So talk about the acquisitions now. You've got a okay. lot more acquisitions coming into the company. Um, does it reach your desk and doesn't really affect your positioning? I mean, you've got to manage budgets and everything, but operationally it's Nothing yeah. really shifting for you, right? No, there's, there's a natural tension, and I think one of the unique things about EMC is we tend to buy these um, smallish, not, not, not totally startups, but smallish companies, and then we use our cash to accelerate their growth plans. So I could pick on Data Domain, or Isolan, or Greenplum, or VMware, or, I mean, there's a lot of companies that we bought, Abamar, Archer. Much smaller, under, you know, under 500 million. <laughs> well, uh, About 400 million well, small. Yeah, yeah. All, all of these guys, uh, <laughs> I think the biggest one in terms of revenue that we've acquired was either Data Domain at Iceland, like 150, 170 yeah, million. I think Data Domain was pretty high too. Yeah, well, but sub 200 million. So Data Domain, yeah. way north of a billion today. And so what we've tried to do is say, these guys have got a proven value proposition, we can use our cash to accelerate their growth plans. Because we empower them to run as a unit, you create this tension because they want to go out and tell a backup message to everyone, and the security guys want to go tell a security message to everyone, and so at times I play referee of like kind of who's on top. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, we've, the progress we've made in the last few years, that is generally fairly well-natured, mm -hmm. and when folks come to conferences like this and they see the outcome, they realize like, all right, maybe the fight was a little bit ugly, but at least we did the fight in the back at the office instead of on the show floor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, Dave and I always talk about yeah. EMC, how they transform, and with Pat here, we can't help but go to the Intel, yeah. the Intel, Wintel monopoly with uh, you know uh, Microsoft and Intel back in the day, but with EMC and VMware, and the e open ecosystem's evolving. EMC is really becoming an enabler, moving from the house storage. Um, so, how do you look at things like the VC firm? I mean, that, I mean the VC arm of EMC has yeah. changed. Um, you have yeah. new leadership that's from Intel. Um, yeah. Talk about pivotal have a lot going on. There's a yeah. massive startup scene evolving around IT right now yeah. with consumerization of IT, which we've talked about many times here in theCUBE. So there's this, there's this real excitement around IT right now. Mm -hmm. and, and enterprise is a different business now than it was 
uh, 10 years ago, yeah. a lot more investment, a lot more blurring of the lines between yeah. ops and dev and, and, and enterprise and home and bring your own phone to work. Yeah. So all this disruption is excitement, a lot of investment. You yeah. promote that? I mean, you've got a lot going yeah, on Yeah, I mean, there. I think part of what we were trying to do yesterday with Area 51 and what we'll continue to do today with, with things like Chad's World is, um, show the, the kind of raw technology and the raw innovation that exists inside the company. Um, some of the things that I showed yesterday, they've been, they've been products for a year. Like NetWitness, this uh, almost minority report style examination of everything that's going on on the network, uh, that's a real product that you can buy, yet I'd be willing to bet 95% of people at the conference had no idea that it was even part of EMC. And we have Scott McNeely on later today, by the way, too. Oh, you do? Uh, a lot. <laughs> that will always be unrehearsed, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, once, I mean. Once popular, now he's on the cube. <laughs> well, so, uh, so we get we get into places like, uh, we, yeah, I hope he doesn't give you the line as, uh, yeah. in my career now. <laughs> I used to be rich and famous, and now I'm doing no, this. I know, yeah, yeah, now he's on the cube. But, oh, um, God. But no, I mean, we, yeah, we get access to the startup world by kind of keeping the startup mojo of things like Green Plum yeah. and, and, and a pivotal. I think when we started VCE, um, uh, there was a lot of head scratching. Why the heck uh, EMC mm -hmm. starting a company to do infrastructure? Isn't that what they do? But I think we've proven that it was a, a, not just the right call, but I, I'd argue it was a stroke of genius because we empowered an organization to build a converged product. And, and that thing's gone from nothing to a, almost a billion dollar run rate in less than 18 months, yeah. which is just well, staggering. And, and we, we think the numbers are going to come back and change higher. We think yeah. the feedback we're hearing from customers, and at, especially at SAP last, or last yeah. week, uh, was huge feedback. Customers love it. I mean, really? Yeah, the SAP, uh, I want to ask you about that before I do. So the, uh, we had uh, Capellas on yesterday as well. And you know, you clearly, you, you, you talked about VCE, mm -hmm. and you're right, out of the shoot, and Capellas even said, probably made some mistakes, the Acadia yeah. thing, services, yeah. but you got a three year lead on IBM yeah. who just came in and validated yeah. the entire concept. Well you know what happens yeah. as well, startups make mistakes all the time, right? And, yeah. But the only people who see Nobody those knows. mistakes are VCs. <laughs> yeah, right. And then, you know, if, if, if the mistake's really bad, you know, the CEO gets whacked and the new one comes in and the VC's the bad cop, and the thing is you, you're under such a spotlight at a big company, and this is why a lot of big companies don't bother because it's such a spotlight you get pressure from outside, you get pressure from inside, and a lot of these things just crumble under their own weight because the, the, the mothership in their desire to help crushes the small organization within, within the big company. And so I think splitting this thing out and you know, Joe kind of giving them some space to run, uh, and, the, and by the same you know, token, you know, John Chambers on the Cisco side, I think it, they, they've let this thing make mistakes and now develop into something that is a, a, a real force to be reckoned with. So I want to ask you about SAP because yeah. that seems to be the partnership that is, yep. has a shining light right now. Uh, yep. And it's not just an enemy of the enemy. I mean, it's, but maybe that's how it started. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> but, the enemy of my enemy is my but friend. It's, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it's evolved to more than that. We had Jonathan Becker on last week. All right. and, uh, he's been yeah. on a couple he times. He said he called you. You guys had a conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah I so talked to Jonathan, good guy. You know, you guys, I mean, we really have a lot of respect for what you've done, and I think it's a perfect match. I mean, mm -hmm. SAP, it's all suits, a lot of C-level executives at the event. They yeah. don't really, you know, they don't compete with you in infrastructure, yeah. you know, unlike you know, Oracle now. And so, mm -hmm. sort of an interesting dynamic there, a lot of possibilities for that. There, there is, and um, you know, it, it's very interesting how this, as tech has converged, and there's, I think Joe calls it a game of chess going on, um, how do the partnerships then develop? I mean, we've always had this belief that you need friends. Like, you never met a single customer that wants to buy everything from, from one person, so you need friends. I think Cisco, clearly a friend, and then in VCE, if you like, is the embodiment of our friendship. And then going to someone like SAP, that a lot of their guys, they don't care so much about infrastructure, but if we can go to the SAP guys and say, look, less complexity, total cost is lower, that, that strikes a big chord with the SAP crowd because historically, that's one of the things that they've struggled with. And I think you know, the V-Block can eliminate a lot of the friction in the infrastructure. So it's a natural partnership, we don't compete, and, you know, you take that then, the, you know, the HANA um, uh, push, uh, it needs persistent storage. It's an in-memory database, but you need to persist everything that's in there. Again, it's a natural play for Even storage. though their CEO really doesn't understand that. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. So <laughs> we have yeah, no, yeah, friends so with Bill McDermott. So, so we, he yeah, gets it, but. So I actually had a chance to meet with uh, Hasso Platner at the, um, the briefing, um, yeah. little networking, you know, communication yeah. session. Um, I had talked with Bill McDermott and Schnabe. Yeah. And um, get your opinion on this, because I, Jonathan Becker was kind of in our camp as well. Yeah. Um, so I said to him, I said, guys, you have a really strong big data story. They got HANA, yeah. they have in-memory, yeah. they have 
mobile, they're showing analytics. I mean, they actually got product yeah. that's really delivering that, not just a software company, but that value, yeah. that they're, they're actually presenting value. And so I asked uh, Schnabe directly, I said, why aren't you going big data? Yeah. I mean, I said, EMC's out marketing you like left and right, because they just, it's so clean. You have big yeah. data right here. He says, um, big data's hype. Bill McDermott, yeah. kind of wasn't following it, and Jonathan Becker saying, hey, you know, we think we do have the best big data story. Well, you know, so how do you, how do you yeah. talk to those guys and say, you know, you know what's interesting though? <laughs> you, know, well, you know what's interesting though is, SAP, their, their audience is business applications. Uh, you know, so the head of marketing, the head of human resources, the head of finance. And I think they're very adept at talking business value to business executives. Yeah, definitely. Whereas we're more of a scrappy technology company, and so big data is kind of a big tech trend that will be applied to the head of human resources and the head of finance. And so I feel like their natural motion is to talk business value to business people, whereas our natural motion is to follow the tech trend, which is why I think we're on it a little bit earlier. By the way, I think they will absolutely get there. They're all over cloud right now. Yeah. Just right. a little bit later, and I think yeah. they'll get to big Oracle data. Oracle buys a read, but just to counter success factors, just yesterday, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you saw that. I, did. I think I, I have a different take on it. Yeah. When we interviewed you in the first year, um, I think just being humble, Dave and I were talking about this is Jeremy Burton, oh, Veritas, oh, be aggressive, an aggressive marketer. Risks have rewards, yeah. right? And you kind of been a risk taker in your career, not right. heavy duty risk, but bold moves. Yeah, try to. Yeah. You know, get rewards. I think going with cloud means big data was a bold move. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sure you feel that way. So yeah. I don't think SAP is that bold. They're conservative. Yeah, more conservative. But, I mean, that, that, but I think that's a reflection of the people who they market to and sell to. You know, your head of finance is typically not a reckless risk-taking kind yeah, of guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you don't want him to be. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, but, but I think Jonathan can have an impact there. Yeah. I mean, he's a forward-looking guy. Great. And I think uh, you know, he'll have an impact without a shadow of a doubt. So what's your next bold move? I mean, um, I mean you take good calculated bold chances and the, and the payoffs are high. Um, what's your next bold? You know, I'm, ex I'm excited about where big data's going. Um, as you said, real-time analytics, there's a, there's a lot of road ahead of it there. Uh, I'm excited with the work that we're doing with Cisco and converged infrastructure. I think that is going to get um, you know bigger and bigger. Um, I, I, I'm a big believer in you know if you want to know what's next in enterprise, look at what's going on in consumer. Um, there's a little acquisition we made in the IIG team called Simplicity, um, which I think is a is a sleeper. I mean that is a very small acquisition but I think we can do great things with it, and you know, there's a lot of big data. Apparently something ridiculous like uh, two thirds of all the objects on Amazon S3 come from Dropbox. Public sync and share, and when we talk to CIOs, when we talk to IT folks, they're like, hey, we want Dropbox, for, but for the enterprise. They, they don't want some startup managing you know, some of their precious assets, and you know, maybe the combination of what the RSA guys have got, and, and what we've got with Simplicity, plus a bit of knowledge around governance, could be a killer application. Yep. I'd love to see what we can do with that. Uh, that's one for the future. And then we got Flash coming down the line. I mean, we're not done with Flash yet. Yeah, I thought yeah. Pat Gelsinger, we were going to talk to Pat about data, but I was yeah. talking to some folks who do a lot of cloud sizing, and they said yeah. that if the data pace keeps growing, Amazon's model will break because mm -hmm. you can't just move data around. The I.O. involved within Amazon is interesting. It's like, okay, yeah. that for startups it was once you go to Amazon for this, but now yeah. uh, in the quote, big data space, having big data sit there, actually yeah. it's not economical. It's about the mass and viscosity of data, as yeah. I'm sure Pat will yeah. tell you. So we're going to talk about it. <laughs> okay, Jeremy, right. thanks for coming on. All we right, really thanks, appreciate Jess. your hospitality. Right. Jeremy right, Burton, yeah, rising star in the marketing ranks in the industry. Great job here at EMC. Uh, we'll be right back with our next guest, Pat Gelsinger, right after this break. <laughs>